Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the greatly expanded fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Today I'm going to show you a type of stitch known as a vertical mattress suture. Vertical mattress sutures are particularly useful for closing wounds that are under tension. They also help to evert wound edges in situations where the skin is prone to naturally inverting into the wound, such as any concave surface. This stitch has one deep throw and one superficial throw to evert the skin edges, which is very important for healing. The vertical mattress suture can provide closure for both deep and superficial layers and also allows perfect vertical approximation of the superficial skin edges, leading to a stronger repair even in wounds that are under tension, perhaps maybe due to swelling. The vertical mattress stitch is most commonly used in anatomic locations which tend to invert, such as the back of the neck, concave areas of lax skin, or where there's reduced subcutaneous tissue, for example the shin or this pig's foot. It's useful for deep lacerations where it can replace two layers of deep and superficial sutures, conserving sutures in survival scenarios where you may not have much to begin with. Vertical mattress sutures are not recommended, however, for sites such as the palm of the hand, where important structures lie fairly superficial. All right, let's do it. Okay, well, here we go. The pig's foot's oriented favorably for the camera, not so much for me, but it's important you see this. The vertical stitch is placed in a far, far, near, near order of bites, which is why you may have hear it called the far, far, near, near stitch. So the far, far loop enters and exits the skin fairly deep at a 90 degree angle, several millimeters from the wound margin. It passes deeply, as I mentioned, through the dermis. Now we turn our suture needle around and the near, near loop goes through the skin closer to the wound edge and is not as deep. Now use your instrument tie once you are done placing your needle. Here we go. You have a short end and a long end which has the needle on it. And you're gonna do two loops, one and a two. Grab the end of the short end and cross over. That'll give you a nice surgeon's knot and a nice flat, flat knot and it Everts the skin very nicely. Okay, and then you'll do a few single knots, single loops rather. And maybe one more. Whoop. Okay. And now we're going to cut about a quarter of an inch. There you have a vertical mattress suture. And it really did a nice job of averting those wound edges and that will heal very nicely. Let's do another. Now one thing is that's important to know is that your bites have to be symmetrical, especially the depth of the near near loop where the skin edges will misalign. It could heal with like a noticeable shelf on one side. That's important to know. So here we go again, we're going to go Far, far, going relatively deep. Coming out very symmetrically, right across. Reload going the other way. And make sure you have a nice short end there. And now we're going to go ahead and go near, near. And shallow. Remember the knot is tightened only until you get it approximated and you have a version of the wound edges and they're together. That's very, very important. You want to approximate. You do not want to strangulate. Too tight and there's a higher chance that the suture material cuts into the skin. Remember that some swelling will occur during the wound healing itself, so you don't want it to be too tight. Okay, so you're doing your instrument tie, looking good. And there you have another vertical mattress suture. That's the utility of the suture. Now, in, in contrast to this suture, a simple interrupted suture would depend on a very small area to keep the wound together. This gives a lot more strength to the closure and averts the skin edges, as I told you before, 
very, very nicely. So there you have it. Advantages and disadvantages. The vertical mattress stitch is useful in that it gives you stronger, deep, and superficial wound closure than a simple interrupted or running suture. It gives you good edge inversion and alignment. It's also, unfortunately, somewhat time-consuming, so it's not often used by busy surgeons. The control it requires also means that this type of suture is somewhat unforgiving if you fail to align the edges vertically. This type of stitch is also prone to dig into skin. It's more likely than other suture types to leave small scars along the main wound, making it less useful in areas where the appearance of the scar makes a difference, like the face. If you're placing this suture in areas where there is no joint, remove the stitches in a week. Consider leaving them in longer over a knee or other joint. That gets a lot of action. I'd say two weeks. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, learn more about 200 off-grid medical topics in the award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook. And get your family medically prepared with quality kits and individual supplies from our entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.